It was an historic setting. Good evening, I'm Ramona Robinson here at the Silver Grill in the Higby Building in downtown Cleveland. It was an historic gathering. Tonight, some of the state's leading advocates for children will identify ways that you can improve the quality of life for children today and the quality of our communities for the next generation. Last fall, the legendary Silver Grill in the Higby Building in downtown Cleveland was filled with over 200 community leaders and dignitaries from many walks of life. But their common interest and concern was the welfare of Greater Cleveland's children. There was a study done not long ago in one of the major urban school districts in Ohio. And they did a study of kids who were just entering kindergarten. They found that two-thirds of those children did not know that you read words from left to right or that you read a book from front to back. With the city of Cleveland smarting from being labeled the poorest large city in the country, it was rally time. Time to get the word out about what Greater Cleveland was doing about the problem. I believe strongly that who we are as a society is reflected in how we treat our children. And our report card isn't very good. The tipping point for many was the national report that Cleveland is number one in poverty. That harsh reality hasn't awakened compassion. Clevelanders already had that. But it has pushed us off center and generated a sense of urgency. Showcasing the event were the sponsoring groups, Voices for Greater Cleveland's Children, KidsOhio.org, the Center for Families and Children, Forest City Enterprises, and WKYC-TV. The television special that came out of that event initially reached over 200,000 homes in the region, two primetime airings on Channel 3, and additional exposure on WVIZ, PBS in Cleveland, prompted heartening response from the public that has gone well beyond any prediction made before it aired. The messages carried in the documentary hit the mark. They touched people in many ways. One person summed it up when she said, I left that evening with a lot of hope. Hope that comes from dedicated teachers. I get a thrill out of seeing them get a thrill out of knowing that they've learned something, that I've got it. And from there, they just go with it. And that is such a reward for me, as well as a child. Hope that comes knowing children are being helped. What we found as we traveled around Northeast Ohio, looking at many different programs for kids, is an impressive infrastructure of good people doing good things for children. Today, what we have in this community, young children being identified and being brought into services. People like Maya Meadows, a mother whose son was having real problems. My son was four and a half and he wasn't talking. Um, he had become aggressive. Um, in order to express his needs, he would scream, cry. Um, they work with him one-on-one. -on -one. They use um, some visual cues, sign language. I think this helped tremendously. People heard that kids who make mistakes are not branded for life. Within the first two years of our program, truancy went down 75% in the schools. Not only do we just have children come into court and perhaps be ordered to do community service or other uh, penalties or sanctions for what they've done, we try to look at them and say, why did you get here? We've had a great reaction from the community only because this is a diversion program and the kids' cases are not held official. So after a year's up, their record is completely destroyed. So therefore, it is, it's, it is such a positive program because this will not be on their college records or their adult records. And they gained hope from programs that catch problems early in life. There seem to be a lot more kids nowadays with problems, and I don't know if it's due to societal concerns and things like that, but absolutely the need is growing. Years ago, children like the ones in this class would probably have been expelled or otherwise lost to society. Today, they're in a normal setting with their own friends in their own age group. Those are just some of the things that were highlighted in our first special on building greater kids in Greater Cleveland. Now it's time to build on that foundation with a new primetime special that will air in the fall of this year. It will make its public debut at a special screening on September 7th and will have three purposes. First, to humanize families and children receiving services. Second,
to showcase cost-effective public policies and programs, and third, to deflate stereotypes by showing that most families using services are working, many are married, and many live in suburban communities. The program will raise awareness about the unmet needs of children in Northeast Ohio and showcase effective programs that help families meet their youngsters' needs. Stories like the WIC program in Lake County. The WIC program is an educational program for mothers that are pregnant, postpartum, or breastfeeding, and for children up to the age of five. It's an education program as far as nutrition and health. WIC stands for Women, Infants, and Children Nutrition Program. It's been around since 1976. It's a federally funded program that has been one of the most successful ever. It operates in all 88 Ohio counties as well as nationally. Rachel Foote is married and she and her husband are excited about their first baby expected in just eight weeks. The food coupons she gets from WIC are a tremendous help. The extra $25 to $30 a month is a huge help. I mean, that, that fills the gas tank these days and it's, it's going to help, when, especially once the baby gets here. We don't know how to budget that yet, the diapers and the, all that. Economic times are tough. Just ask Rachel. There would be times where we would, we would go a week or so without milk because we couldn't afford it. We'd just drink water. And, so it has helped quite a bit. Clients are given coupons and are restricted to foods like milk, cheese, eggs, juice, cereal, peanut butter, and beans. All foods have been screened for their food value, and each recipient's needs are carefully tailored to their family's likes and dislikes. We prove that it saves money in the long run if you get a pregnant mom healthy, she has a healthy baby, and then that healthy baby goes on to be a healthy adult. It's obvious to outside observers that the WIC program shows its clients respect and caring. One example is a new part of the program that allows WIC clients to benefit from shopping for fruit and vegetables at farmers markets around the state. We are able to then offer our clients fruits and vegetables from our local farmers, which is really, really a nice benefit that goes along with the other packages of food items that we give them from the WIC program. Many farmers have signed up to be part of the program and some can relate to people like Rachel. I've had family members that, uh, my one brother-in-law is an electrician, you know, should have a great job at all times. He gets laid off all the time. So we see the value of a program like this for people that get in need, you know. So yeah, we're 100% we're behind it. This sensitivity to those in need also extends to explaining to Rachel the benefits of certain foods and how to prepare them. It's another way children in Northeast Ohio are being helped. It's a win-win program. I think the neatest thing is that every night that I go home from work, I know that I've impacted on the life of a child. And in the ultimate end, I've impacted on the lives of the community and our nation by producing healthier children and mothers. The next program in this series will also look at early diagnosis of learning disabilities, screening for social, emotional, and physical problems in children, and show the economics of why we should pay attention to issues like infant hearing screening and lead paint screening. Let's hope making our children healthier also helps make our region stronger with a bright future for people of all ages.